Good morning. It is again 6 a.m. and I am. It is 6 a.m. and I'm really not awake because my three year old has had me up since about 3.45. So I'm shocked that I'm actually sitting here. But here I am. And as you guys start to come on, I hope that everybody just kind of jumps in, start, you know, say hi and, and let me know that you're here as you come on in. Um, since I've been up since about three o'clock off and on, and you know, there was a whole bunch of stuff that kind of came into me. My, I looked at my clock and it was 4.44 at one point and I just, I smiled even though I was exhausted. I smiled because I was like, okay, I'm really big into angel numbers and just getting the number 444 was like my, my angels are around me. They're guiding me. They're, you know, they're watching over me. And yesterday with everything that I had talked about, one of the things that I did not cover was the importance of signs. So I wanted to do that really quick on the front end of this. And then, and, and then here at 444 this morning and actually at 344 and then 444 when I looked at the clock. I just had all this, the angels just, you know, just kind of making their presence known, which was very comforting, even though not getting much sleep. But the importance of signs is, you know, once we, we go through all these steps and we, we build some foundation, we, we figure out, you know, we are, we're coachable to our souls, we're coachable to the teachers in our life, we're coachable to God, the universe. And then we start to work on other things that as, as we move down that path, looking for signs and, and really just being open to the universe and saying, you know, I, I want to follow. I want you to lead me. That means that you have to actually be open to being led. And the universe does not speak to us like our neighbor or our, our child or our parent or our spouse. The neighbor, the universe uses symbology it uses different ways it might be a feeling that is pressed on us it may be you know something that keeps reappearing to us like a number it may be you know an animal that keeps that will come out of nowhere it it, it can be a colors it can be a song that just keeps popping up it can be you know something that just all of a sudden it's just kind of muted and then this, this statement, like in a movie, might just go, wow, really, really loud at us. Why do those things happen? Those are, from, you could say that they're from the subconscious, but they are from a, a different energetic realm than our own. And they're there trying to guide us towards, like if you, if you watched the first Conscious Coffee, I was talking about the mothership and how to kind of get, and one of the things, you know, when, when we're looking for that purpose, we, we are, we're searching. We don't know how to, what, what our purpose is. At least we feel like we don't know what our purpose is because we think that we should have a better feeling of it. When we're looking for trying to figure out what our purpose is, until we figure out that our purpose is always with us, because the truth of the matter is that our purpose is always with us. Our purpose changes moment by moment by moment. It is one large picture, but our we are living on purpose and in our purpose every single moment of our life. And as we do that, it, it's really, um, yeah, everybody's saying hi over there. So everybody say hi to each other. Let each other know that you're, you're there. I see that a few people have joined, but not everybody has, has said hi and everything. So good morning to you guys that are with me. Thank you. Um, so when you're looking for that purpose, part of it, when, when we're still kind of in that doubting phase, is to actually ask for signs, ask for, um, you know, the things that, that can guide us. And what I mean by that is, you know, I follow feathers. I've been following feathers since I was about 17 years old. And at 17, I found a woman named Denise Lynn, and I do encourage anybody who likes Native American spirituality or is just into dream interpretation or wants to learn more about the mystical from a Native American and with a with a twist of Hawaiian flair to it to explore Denise Lynn because I used to do um, dream interpretations in my 20s and I did that for years and, and with 
dream interpretations, I learned all about symbology and what different things mean. And Denise, she, when I was living up in Washington, I, I took a few of her workshops and classes and got the privilege of actually working with her. And it was absolutely fantastic because she really did, it, you could feel spirit would just swirl around this woman. And it was all about how she opened up to life. And she opened up to life and she she really received the messages. And it, the only way she received it was because she put awareness on it. And a lot of the times we don't put awareness on it. We're not even ready. We're not energetically, mentally, emotionally ready to receive the messages. So we sit there and we say, you know, God guide me. Angels guide me. Spirit guides guide me. Whatever you want to use here, right? And we're like, okay, guide me, guide me, guide me. But then we shut down our awareness because we're not actually vibrating at the right frequency, you could say, to receive those messages. We're not, we have not grown to be the person that can open up these channels so fast. Because the universe loves speed. The universe doesn't like to fuck around. It likes to just give it to you right now. We are the ones that get in our own way of receiving because we haven't done, we haven't built up that, that muscle to actually receive. And a lot of that, it, the simple part of it is to really open up to the sign. So when you ask for a sign, the next step is you have to actually open up and start looking for the sign. You can't go, okay, and then walk around like this. That's not going to work. You can't, you know, if you've got your hands over your ears and your eyes, then you're never going to receive the sign. So I, I do suggest get into all the meanings of signs. But I do suggest one of my favorite books is, I believe it is called The, the, the Meanings of Signs by Denise Lynn. But if you just go in, it's a purple and red book. And Denise Lynn is the author. And she's got a whole bunch of stuff out there. Fantastic. I encourage anybody to get on the newsletter. Um, I believe she's out in, in like Napa, California now. She does incredible retreats as well. But, you know, if, if you want your, you are like, I, copy about how to speedily create your desires and it just comes back to awareness and asking for for messages from the universe asking for signs and then to actually be able to receive those signs and have that awareness that you know that, that open heart that childlike enthusiasm to receive them and that means that you have to really fight against doubt because doubt tends to kick in. But doubt is the one thing that will detour us from what we what we're wanting, our desires. And you know, I know I'll take like that workout. You know, we're working out, we're working out, we're working out, and you know, two weeks in on the workout. And at first, that first week, we're like, yeah, 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 I'm doing great, I'm doing great, because we're all pumped up because we're excited. The following week, you know. We're getting tired. We're getting bored. This is why we're not seeing results yet. We're not really feeling great yet because our bodies, you know, are still recalibrating to what they need to be. We haven't lost the weight. We haven't gained the muscle. We haven't done all this different stuff. So by the end of the second week, but like, oh, you know, so we have to, but in that moment, we are aware that, okay, it's only been two weeks. So we keep pushing, we keep pushing, we keep pushing. And a lot of people will make it 30 days. Some people will make it 45 days. And we're told that it takes 21 days to create a habit. That's not true. It does not take 21 days to create a habit. It actually takes 62 to 63 days to create a habit. We create the physical habit within 21 days, but the mental connection to actually change in the brain takes 62 days. So you've got to push through to that. And then you still have to have the consistency and the will to make that change. You know, I think it was yesterday that I was talking about a desire to change. Well, a desire to change has to get you to 62 days, and then it has to get you to the next 62 days. Because even in the midst of the following 60, your second 62 days, you're going to have a lot of doubt creep up. Because things aren't always going to go the way you want them to go. You might get sick. There might be emergencies. You might travel. This, you know, holidays are great for destroying our goals and everything. But it really does come down to that desire and then recognizing, again, awareness, awareness to 
what is going on in here and and that awareness is where we're if we're not aware to something then we won't receive anything so we have to first shine the spotlight on there and go okay I see that I see why I need to change I see that I need to increase my energy here I see that I, to I see that I might be saying that I want this but I'm actually putting this out and devastating and that's the whole thing we do a lot of this but we don't realize what we're actually putting out to the world and then we you know it's like well I'm I'm doing all the right things and yeah you're, you're doing all the right things except for one thing you keep doubting and as long as you keep doubting you always go another direction. Every single time you doubt, you're taking the wrong door. And the universe is sitting there going, oh, are you kidding me? If you would just stop doubting, it's sitting right there. I placed it right there. You're two steps away and you chose to take the doubt door. So doubting is definitely the downfall that we, we suffer from as human beings because we, we, we crash and burn every single time we doubt. Now, I... I was trying to figure out, I made, I made some notes because I needed to go and find some quotes. And I was at 4.44 this morning. I'm like, what can I do? You know, like, the angel numbers got me and all that good stuff. But, so when I was laying there and I was saying my little prayer, like I say every single morning, trying to figure out if I should get up or not. And I didn't. I tried to stay in bed and, until for another hour. But my brain was going. I was saying my prayer and I just kept thinking, you know, I was having this conversation. And yes, Addison, I'm putting you on the spot here because I know that you're watching but Essen was over at my house last night and we were talking and, and, you know, we were talking about thoughts and I was saying, you know, our thoughts is what creates our reality. And, and yes, I know that this is all, anybody who watched the movie, The Secret, would be like, oh, there she goes off on the movie, The Secret. Yes, it is like the movie, The Secret. The Secret gave us little, little itty bitty bits and pieces of what, what this actual secret is. They didn't give us the full deal. And the full deal really isn't that big of a deal. It's, they gave us, they gave us what we needed in that moment. It's just that people won't apply it because doubt keeps kicking in and doubt, and people take the doubt door. So as long as you take the doubt door, you can focus on your thoughts and you can try to create positive thoughts. You know, and that's what we're told. Oh, have positive thoughts. Well, what do you do when you're in a state of anger, when you're in a state of frustration, when you're in a state of depression? What do you do in those moments? Because doubt is all around you and you're feeling so doubtful. Well, it's hard to get out of it. You're, you're down here in the bottom of the well of negativity and you don't know how to get out of it. It comes back in those moments and in overall, next to having positive thoughts, working with our minds, right? Our brains actually, and, and if we really get into this, we've got the brain in our head, and then we have our mind, our you know, our thoughts are not necessarily with our brain. Our brain is kind of like a great big um, antenna and receiver all at the same time because it does it sends out and it takes in. So that is what the brain is. It's, it's this antenna. It's a physical antenna in our body, and then the mind is this thing that we we all say oh yes I have a mind but our mind's not the brain our mind is, is you know this more in the quantum physics world it is it is an energy base and that's where our thoughts come from but our thoughts are connected to the feelings and I'm not saying emotion I'm saying the feelings that we have so our emotions are different than our feelings and they, they do come together, but they are separate. Much like the mind and the brain come together, but they are separate. So when we're thinking positive thoughts, it's not that we're just sitting there going, you know, I make six-figure income. I am debt-free. I am this. I am that. I weigh this. I That's all fine and dandy, but there's not a whole lot of feeling to that. I mean, I didn't put a whole lot of feeling in that. I can say that all damn day long and none of it's going to happen. So what you have to do is you have to attach the sensation of love 
in the beginning. You have to go to your heart center. If you're feeling anger, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling frustrated, if you're feeling anything on the lower spectrum of the emotional chart of the, of the pyramid there, and that more that darkness as I refer to it, you have to come back to your heart center. You have to come back to, to you know, finding just a spot of love for yourself. You have to do a little bit of forgiveness work. You have to, you know, go, I am human. I do make mistakes. I love myself anyway. And if you can't find love for yourself, find something. Everybody has received or felt a feeling of love in their life. And I want you to focus in on the most powerful feeling of love that you have ever experienced. That moment right there. Take a moment every single day when you are, you know, after you get up and everything, if you're doing a prayer, if you're doing a meditation, if you're writing out affirmations, if you're journaling, if you're doing whatever positive creation work you're doing, before you start it, tap into that moment. Because the mind the brain, they are powerful things. And they can take us back to that sensation that we had five years ago, 15 years ago. There is a memory there. So we're tapping into the memory and we're pulling it forward because it's already anchored there. So now we're just going to pull it forward. And when we pull that forward, we're actually anchoring it in to the current moment. And that is the sensation that you want to build it. So you tap into that love tap into that feel-good space, and then from there, start doing your positive thinking and start that creation work with the thinking. And then notice any time that that doubt door pops up and says, hey, take me over here, make a conscious decision to choose not to take it and to stick on your path. And it is going to be, you know, tough and, and to do that, but it really is that important. You've got to think 90 eight to 99 percent of the process of creation of having the life that you want of having the dreams that you that you're feeling called towards the desires and desire is there because it is there that it, it wants you as bad as you want it it is on your path you have that calling towards it that desire is there because it's already yours you just have to open up to it to receive it so it you want to open up to receive it, then you have to get your thoughts in alignment to it and your feelings in alignment to it. And those are the keys. So once you figure out what that, that moment of love is, tap into that and then go into your positive thinking, your journaling, your meditation, your prayer, your whatever you're doing to get yourself more in alignment to that. And I was, the, some of the quotes that I was looking at, it's Bible, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7 is as a man thinketh, so is he. And uh, that really is the, the message from God about just this right here. You know, as a man thinketh, so is he. Um, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, as you sow, so shall you reap. You know, we, that, that quote gets used a lot, like be careful of what you're doing, the actions and, and all that kind of stuff. Well, it, our actions are not as important as our we create our world through our thoughts and our feelings. Our, the universe is constantly reorganizing itself because of our thoughts and our feelings. So we can be this close to our desire. And if our thoughts and feelings decide to take the doubt door, we're all of a sudden the distance between you and China, between, you know, Western China or in China and America or China and Canada, wherever, as much matter. You create this humongous distance between you and your, your goal when just from that little moment. So as soon as you feel this like, Ugh, I'm not good enough. I'm not supposed to have it. Maybe I'm on the wrong path. And when you linger in that, it's not those little split second pops. Those I'm not talking about. It's when you actually step in and linger in the thought and you get comfortable and set up camp there for the day. Okay, so if you set up camp in the thought of negativity, the thought of doubt, you actually are taking that doubt door and you take yourself from right there with your desire. It was just right around the corner. And God's like, it's right there, it's right there, it's right there. But no, you decided that you were going to set up camp over there in the doubt area because for some reason, that's where you're, you're still vibrating at. Now, but 
the as you sow, so shall you reap is really about as you sow, as you sow, so shall your life reap. And and when you start to think about that, you know, there's many, many, no matter what religion we go to, if we were to go down the Buddhist route, if we were going to even look at Tantra, if we were going to, you know, it does not matter. All the base religions come back to the same principles. And these principles are talking about quantum physics. They're talking about the energy, that power, our being between our heart and our brain, these receptors, these antennas, how they put out and they also magnetize too. So it's really about, you know, not growing in the life that you want, but that you're getting pulled towards the life that you want. You're radiating it out. You just have to step into the light to get it. Um, Winston Churchill, he was, you know, a fantastic um, a, a leader. He understood so much. And I was like, you create your own universe as you go along. And that really comes back again to what? You know, it doesn't matter what our circumstances are. It doesn't matter what side of the tracks we were born on. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what color our skin is, what our religion is, what our age is, or anything. It comes down to these two spaces, and we are creating. That's why two people can live in the same house and have a completely different reality going on, because one person can be living in negativity, and the other person can be living in positivity. You can look at the scenario and you go, oh, my gosh. How the hell is that possible? How can that person be so depressed and everything shitty be going on for them? And that person over there is pumped up and excited and they have good stuff going on. It's because of these two sources, okay? So you do have to watch who you're around. You do, it, there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into play. You have to be willing to have those different changes come in and, and you know, open the doorway to clear out your closet like I was talking about yesterday, right? clearing out your closet to make room for this new energy. But you you energetically clear out your closet by doing the right thoughts and having the right feelings. Thank goodness, uh, I've cranked it up to like 22 minutes again. Um, another great angel number going on there. But I really, I think I want, I'm kind of going to close real quick on this, but you know, it really is about, you think it's, you feel it, you have to believe it, turn away from doubt. And what I'm going to actually discuss, and I wasn't going to set this up already, but I know that this is where it needs to go. Tomorrow I'm going to discuss all about letting go. And I think that that is one of the most difficult topics because we're supposed to have this laser focus on our, on our goals, on our dreams, on the things that we want to create. We do have to have a laser focus, but at the same time, we have to learn to let go. So I'm going to kind of go through, I'll share my letting go process and what letting go means to me and what I've learned about that. But right now, if you can just focus on anybody watching this, you know, focus on your thoughts and your feelings around the desires that you have. Put yourself one, two, three, four, five years, whatever that is, six months into the future and say, all right, hey, me of the future, how do you feel? What, what are you doing? How are you living? We can't always create exactly what we're going to be doing in five years because our, there's lots of different pictures that will be different, like our financial picture or our relationship picture you know, or our health picture. And if we're moving in a positive way, they'll be positively different for us. So we can't, do, we can't access that. But what we can access, and this is why feeling is so important, we can access. <laughs> going to, but when I have this, what am I going to feel like? And then take the wind off and say, I have this. This is. I have this. This is. Now focus on that sensation. You have it. What do you feel like? And come at the the current moment as though you already have it. You have to start living according to what you want you have by getting in alignment that means that you are you are living according to the 
you've just got to get into living in the future, if you're living in the past, then you're not going to get from that. You're not going to create the desires that you have put out there in the future because they're already with you. They already exist. They're already right there at your feet. You just ignore them. You're not seeing them. You can't pick them up because you're putting yourself someplace else. So get into the now with your thoughts and your feelings. Focus in on those. Attach yes to the desire. Focus on clearing out the space so that you can actually have the room for what you're wanting to create. And tomorrow I will go into a little bit about letting go and maybe some of the actual creation work that I personally do on different things. Then I hope that you had some great coffee because mine got cold because I was talking. And if you want to connect with me, you can connect with me at www.kendallwilliams.com and some more um videos and stuff here on Facebook. And also I've got the $27 a month coaching program that I've uh, got out right now and some classes on Udemy and a whole bunch of awesome, great stuff going on. But really just keep following me here. I really appreciate it. Make sure that you share your favorite video out of off of Facebook on your wall and to potentially just, um, get a free empowerment coaching hour with me. So I've got that running until the 5th. And I love you guys and I will catch